Longcast. Listening to all of this stuff here on this Lowcast. 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 All the times we've done our things, gonna miss all the things we do on the Lowcast. It was a blast. All the Paper staff. We had done the summer of kind of making music and whatnot. And this is fall of '92. Two. So I guess all that before was yeah, starting of '91 into '92. Since so the next year, we're on newspaper staff. That we, Pat and I, are both. I don't know if he was an editor. I think he might have been. I was production manager at that point. We were sort of in charge. I'm not. I, I forget what my position really is, but I think I was a. Uh, if I was, if this, this was the summer that I was the uh, copy editor to start with, and then I think I became managing editor when Jay was production manager. Um, so we basically had case of the kingdom, man. We could do anything that we wanted, and it wasn't so it wasn't that hard. We we sort of had a puppet government. Sean Morgan was the uh, executive editor. And he had his hand full with changing the name of the newspaper. When school started, this guy named Dylan Cohen's came into the newsroom and wanted to be a writer. He was from Pennsylvania. Just really uh, likable guy. And we started up a conversation pretty early on. And Yeah, I remember when he said we wanted to go out for a, our first cigarette break together. He opened up a cigarette pack and there was a joint in there. His little way, am I cool or not? And, something like that so while nobody was looking we decided we we're gonna have a uh, a little revolution during the first couple maybe the first month or so there was the fall city mushroom festival in fall city and that was where they go and pick the mushrooms of the wolf march and all that stuff through the woods we decided to go to that event and cover it. So everything came together at the right time. And then of course, the Fall City Mushroom Festival was a <laughs> one uh, beginning part of our sort of gonzo journalism where we go and participate. You know, of course, get high as kites, or drunk as skunks, or whatever, whatever it was that made us go at a particular time. So Daly, Cohen, myself, Dave, I think Quinn may have been there. Anyway, we all went in Pat Tavlari, and I think we made another car, Falls City. But we came back and wrote this piece that was all, all it was Dylan, and Pat, and I that were all going to write together on this one piece, each taking turns, sentence break. Like I'd write the first sentence, Pat wrote the second, Dylan wrote the third, and just wrote the story that way. And I think, you know, I don't know if it ran or not. I'd be surprised if it did run. It was pretty bad. Fall City, Oregon, hosts the 8th Annual Mushroom Festival. Ten officials called this the most successful one ever. ever. The streets of this small, of small Polk County, County Hamlet were converted to an outdoor market outdoor selling market homemade, crafts homemade crafts and stuff. stuff. Local bands tried to be invited. There were several of them. We also had the Lincoln City Blues Festival. The, I think it was Lincoln City Blues Festival that I was covering for one newspaper. Jason was covering for another newspaper. We all went. Um, now this is before I, yeah, then I had quit drinking for a while, moved to Boise and, and moved back and Jason, had, 
never seen me drink before, I don't think. So, um, something like that, I forget. Yeah, we all got kicked out of the booth for whatever reason that was. Shortly after that, maybe the next week, somebody walked in from the health and marijuana prohibition, and the hemp people, saying we we would like you guys to write some, you know, some, some positive stories about us, and we'll, we'll buy ads if you do that. And <laughs> and you know, the, no, we don't do that. You know, you're not going to buy editorial content. And as soon as the guy walked out. I think Pat and I approached him and said, yeah, the paper won't do it, but we have another newspaper that will. That we would be more than happy to blur that line. We'll take your money. It was like $250, $300. It was a lot of money for something that didn't exist yet that we thought, just wow, yeah. okay. And we had to write uh, two, an article in each paper and I think do a commentary in each paper about pro marijuana legalization and they would give us and they gave us this cash. Yeah, finding the fun the funding from the hemp guys was a real trip. Um, those guys were kind of conspiracy theorists that um, you know really believed in you know all of the uh, well I think they believed in UFOs and all kinds of you know black ops and that sort of thing. So we had a meeting at the Caros on Lancaster in Salem with them and signed the contract, got the money and all that. And then we set out to making this first issue. So when they when we met with them and they wrote us a check for five hundred dollars, we were just absolutely astounded that this thing is actually getting pulled off. And the the fun part that we had to that we got to do was go down to the Secretary of State's office and um, make uh, loathe a 501c3, I believe, a nonprofit company. And once we had that paperwork, we could open a bank account. And once we could open a bank account, we could set up an account with Eagle Web Press to do, you know, several thousand runs of our of our revolutionary newspaper. We only got one run out of it, but we, that was the idea. Pushing, pushing pot, and that was our lead story. It's a big photograph of the billboard they just paid to put up, um, and then we filled the rest of the content with just short stories. There's a story about getting arrested in Tillamook for picking mushrooms. Um, we had uh, the, the Gratefully Stone Hubble Dead Beetle Pie played a party for Becky Bryant, and that was our big. Uh, um, the Pies big debut, so that got reported. Somebody else had a band, so again we were trying to break all the rules that we as we knew them as far as layout, design, and you know, very big black pages with white per, with white type. Don't ever do that in newsprint because it's kind of a bad idea. And you know, since I was doing production and the paper, we didn't want to look like the paper necessarily, so we broke every rule, we reversed out type, we turned stuff sideways, cut it all by hand, laid it all out, but it was printed on newsprint, on quarter fold. Got a thousand or fifteen hundred made, and started just handing them out. And, and so, what was it called? What was the paper called? Load. Load. How did you come up with that name? <laughs> Okay, the name, came about, from, the name came about. The name. And then, and then once you talk about the name, talk about this iconic design. Okay, here. so we we're do. You know, I was messing around on the paper, and you know, because we produced, it was a weekly. It didn't come out every day, so we had a lot of time in the newsroom. We weren't really doing much, just hanging out. And so I made a stupid little paper making fun of something that this guy, Distant Baker, who was on staff. Did you know? Funny picture I had him or something, and called it and typed revolt at the top, and that was going to be our student paper revolt, and then changed it because there was something else called revolt, and typed loathe without an e, and then Pat saw my shoulder, now it's got an e on the end. The name 
Lowe started off as a project that Jay was working on where we had to design our own paper and I think it was suggested that the name be Revolt, which is funny because that's coming back around on the guitar. Um, and then it went to Loathe, and then Loathe with an E. So that's where the name kind of started. Um, um, that's where the name came up. And the typeface, you know, this was in 92. Mac computers didn't have that many fonts on them. And this was, even, this was an Apple IIc, probably. Maybe. Maybe it was, you know. I, I didn't know enough about Macs to know what I was even using as what the newsroom had. And so we went through all the fonts, and that's called Meath. And in some heated debate, we uh, came up with that masthead by the nameplate. Um, also known as DG Wit, and I'm here to tell you just exactly how I fell into this pit of weirdness called Loathe many, many moons ago. I guess nearly 20 years ago? Jesus Christ, 20 years. But, you know, uh, I was a young hippy-dippy fool studying art and hanging out with some of the best pals a young guy could have. They happened to be journalism students, and they started up this weird little uh, one-shot underground newspaper thing with, uh, with what was it, Normal? Is it Normal that uh, actually funded the first one? Sued us because, so sued you. <laughs> Because you didn't put out the second one? That's, that's funny. But, you know, um, I was an art student. I didn't write, and these guys were doing this thing, but, you know, it kind of made me a uh, natch for the position of illustrator, so I started doing some cartoons for them and providing fodder for uh, funny stories as a side character, I suppose. Um, but, yes, yeah, so we got went back to the illustrations. Dylan, myself, and Pat, actually, Dylan and Pat wrote the bulk of the stuff. I wrote a few things. And we all had different we used fake names. But, you know, one of the things we wanted to promote the band, which was there, um, use the band to promote the newspaper and have the newspaper promote the band. It's kind of this. That was our, our, our goal. Mm -hmm. That everything should be self, self-serving. self So that was the idea of Loathe. Initially, um, we printed up however many we did, 1,500, I think, and sort of started distributing those, and then that became sort of a, a somewhat infamous kind of thing. And so we handed out these papers. They went pretty quickly, you know, and uh, people kn knew kind of how to, to track us down to the newsroom to be able to hand us, you know, you know make somehow they made a connection where we were hanging out on campus. Uh, that we'll be introducing an international war desk mm -hmm. that will keep everybody informed on the state the world is in. Pre-internet. We were, we were going to be the web. That is, uh, well, that's kind of crazy. Yeah. So that's how it's, that started. So the second, you know, people have been... I think that's actually important to note. This is a pre-internet, yeah. which is uh, obviously the, the direction that it quickly went once the, the net was was prominent, but this is a, uh, probably, probably gives you an even bigger cachet, would you say, at the time, to have something unique, because there was less, co there was just way less content yeah. out there. Right, we, uh, it was certainly, people were starved for this sort of irreverent, what is this, this isn't, because Salem's a pretty conservative place, I mean, it's not a, there isn't a lot of culture there, at least there wasn't in, in the early 90s. Um, so in that small little pocket of Shemekka, there's enough weirdo students, and we went downtown and handed them out. People by the bus stop, and they took yeah. them. And there's just, there was enough there, so that when the people started approaching us and want to see, I want to write for you guys, I want to do, I want to get involved, and the numbers jumped to like, I don't know, 15 to 20 people all of a sudden that wanted to be help, and they all had great ideas. And then we had all kinds of help. People all, you know, people had all kinds of ideas how they were going to help. Love was such a cool thing, um, and things just imploded. Just too many people. Then, of course, we had too many cooks in the kitchen and, and uh, too many chiefs and not enough Indians. So we had all these great ideas. We would have 
great big meetings, planning sessions, and everybody's going to do this, and everybody's going to do that. And it all kind of went down the toilet. And I think we spent the last of the load money on a bag of marijuana for one of those parties, smoked that all up, and then that was it. So 10 years later, it gets, uh, Jason had moved back to the West Coast, I had moved to Boise, um, I was, what was I doing, working my own business with my friend Buddy Van Buren over here. Then, um, the idea for the website started coming up, I had written a story about about the logical conclusion that I forget what it's called. It was in, I don't know, let me see if I can find it. It's in one of my books, published by Load Publishing, by the way. Chaos. It's just called Chaos. It's on page 59 of Misconnection. There's chaos out there. Our guys, an assemblage of drunks, hacks, and the insane, are trying to hold our position. Three days ago, we took Coit Tower by force and surprise, holding it as our headquarters. None of the San Franciscans expected it. How could they? Not that our propaganda hit our intentions. Anyway, um, in, that, in that story, I sort of predicted the all of our relative success and whatever it was we were doing. I was mayor of San Francisco or something. Um, Chastain's jug band got too big. Whitbeck's juggling act in Vegas was bigger than Elvis. Quinn Jones became, he was a kind of a hitman kind of thing. Snyder was working for the government, so on and so forth. Um, and in that, I, I, you know, dubbed it Low the Megacorp. I liked the kind of the dual edge, the double entendre in, in the sense that, you know, we loathe mega corporations, but we wouldn't if Low the Megacorp became Low the Megacorp. Also, after the published case, or after the movie of Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas came out, and the invention of the internet, and the idea that uh, you could buy websites, buy names, you know, domain names, and stag on them, or, or just sit on them, somebody bought the name loathe.com, and is willing to sell it to us for $30,000. Uh, we don't have $30,000, so we're not going to do it that way. So we couldn't get Loathe.com. We had another a number of options at our disposal, and I threw in there LoatheMegacorp.com, and that's what we ended up getting. So we've had that for, what, four years now? The initial launch was a point of contention because... I think Ben Lee had this idea that we were going to play on the name of Loathing Megacorps and we were going to be this uh, troop of anti-corporate revolutionaries or banditos or Visigoths, 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 say that a lot. Um, and that really wasn't the case. We didn't really know what we were doing, but Chastain wanted to set up the website. He was learning that trick. Um... And we had, like you know, I'd mentioned the books. I had a stockpile of written stuff that Chastain wanted to make into into something. So we had those on the website initially, and then those came down. Chat functions were played with. Various blogs were played around with, although not too much. Um, then you know, then came the idea for the loath cast or the the podcast, and then. We are so enamored with the name Loathe, what else would we call it? So Loathecast became a thing where, and didn't really know what we were doing. But uh, Justin wanted to play with audio. Audio has always been one of his favorite things, so... Um, I just thought, hey, it'd be kind of fun, instead of doing another Mirth and Dither, let's do an electronic, like, little podcast of try to capture this stuff into an audio format. And so, probably made that decision in 
July sometimes. Mm -hmm. We came up with the idea in July and started working out you know, names and starting to format and started recording. Matt Snyder was living in town still, and so he, that's why he did the big low cast. cast. And working with our friends and just explaining, I don't know really what we're doing, but we want to do something like this. And Daly got involved, and he would send me um, cassette tapes. And I resisted it for a while. I, I was like, what is this odd thing about audio? He always wanted me to go stick a microphone by subways or, you know, big, big city sounds. And I now regret that I didn't really take up the interest in it until until later. Um, so Pat would send me, you know, audio cassette tapes. And it was that the way we did our file transferring early on, that wait a few days in the mail. And I'd um, transfer it over and... You know, on, on some of the things, all we had was the tiny old uh, mini cassettes from when our recorder days, those were recorders. Mm -hmm. So we had to send me a recorder and the mini, the mini tapes that were recorded from years ago. And I don't know what's on here. So, working on archiving all of that. But, um, as far as Loadcast is concerned, you know, it became interesting ways to tell stories. It became, you know, a way to play around with nonlinear editing both audio and video, so it became a bit of an education component. Um, and, I don't know, it kind of drifted off from there. Years later, this thing pops back up, Jason resusc resuscitates it for the first time, and I fell back into the Illustrator thing. And, and uh, then I started doing some writing, and Jason pushed and prodded and cracked a whip and insisted and shoved, and I started recording stuff. As each month went, you know, we did the first one, which was kind of fun. Second one was trying to play on the first one, improve or change things. And slowly, you know, people, we start, I started to get a better feel of what was what was working, what wasn't, and got more people got involved. And and tell me a little bit about what was working. I mean, what was working, what wasn't? What did, you know? Okay, well, initially I didn't layer talking over the music. I would play, I was playing like the complete songs. Like, okay, you try to be a more like a radio show. Mm -hmm. And that wasn't very fun to listen to. It got pretty, pretty boring. Issue, or episode number two, is a good example of that. It just wasn't as much fun as part one. Uh, part one, or the first one had a, um, a skit in it called The Nose that Beale, that Ben up in Canada wrote. Um, and that was kind of the idea. We wanted to have these scripted, more, do more things, but realize how much work was involved building those. Trying to record all the parts and then splice them in to make them work. And we didn't know it's easier to record it live if people are if two people are talking, or record one person and then the second person splice it in. You know, then you have more control over the mixing if you do it independently, but it takes more time. It's not as natural sounding. So we're trying to resolve that, figuring out what kind of mics work best. Um, I was learning the software on how to mix audio mm -hmm. during this time. So this is all stuff I'd never done before. Um, and people were starting to get little recorders like that and other types and to figure out how to get the best recording, the best quality off of these little handhelds. Do you set the compression to a certain rate and how we're going to get these files? There's a big, a lot of, we were always fighting with technology. We knew kind of what we wanted. It was like, well, how, now how can we get all this content to me in a, in a timely manner? Cheap. Yeah, for cheap. We don't want to pay anything. We're, we're all very poor. I was always kind of a step behind the technology, though. You know, it goes from the written word to suddenly recording, and everyone's got the fancy recording devices, and I'm sending in tapes. And, and just as I got my digital recording device, then you guys all go to video. So then I'm sending in VHS tapes, and then we finally get our digital video shit together and what happens actually i thought you guys were going to go like holographic but no the damn thing up and dies you know because early on we got a hotline number that 1-800 number you can call yeah that was huge that was a big well, now we don't have to send cassettes we can just record this and it sounds better or um you know adding chat functions so we can work out story ideas and then we had a form for a while so we've always been trying to 
use whatever technology we can, or not have technology be an excuse for why we can't do something. Mm -hmm. And we find out what the limitations are, find out what we can work around, and then just try for a few months and that's something new. And that, you know, this whole push for for figuring ways to gather content is you know it goes on every every week still. Today we've got a conference call now a number that it will take up to 150 people record for six hours. We all call this number enter the code and it's a one big conference call that is being recorded. Go figure that out. Got that going today. We tested it at uh, one o'clock. Nice. Pat and Regan and I tested that. It works. Yeah, the quality isn't the greatest because we're a bunch of cell phones, but it works. You're able to hear people talking at one time. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Ah, it's Mark down in uh, Oakland, California. How I came to loathe. Well, I always liked the name Lothian. I loathe in her. Many of them. But anyway, I came to loathe on an art mission. And I love music. But I don't play music. Well, I used to play music years ago, but I found painting more of a personal, singular activity. And Lowe's, when I heard about Lowe's through Jason, I came offering artwork, images of Lothian, images of Lothian music, volumes one, two, and three, and a few other things. I even think I saw some uh, magnets with my work on it, which I thought was pretty cool. So I came to Lowe's uh, to help out, to volunteer, to put them out there forward in the uh, consciousness of music lovers everywhere. I'm proud to own the volumes. I look forward to the new volume. That is the way I came to Lowe's, and I will be with Lowe's as long as they need me. I will serve gladly, artistically, on the cuff, as they say. Good luck, and may God keep both roaring into the 21st century. Well, I uh, recall all the way back to the earlier incarnation of Lowe, the print version. Um, I was not in any way involved, but uh, certainly was great friends with Dave Whitbeck and and then Pat Daly and the gratefully stone humble beetle pie. Hi, Joe. Gratefully stone humble dead beetle fuck. Got it. And uh, of course, um, that was when Dave, I guess, met you in at Chemeketa. Yeah. So uh, Dave had the music thing going. I was down up here in Portland uh, playing in a band called Bombay at that time, and uh, everyone uh, at. Uh, the Salem core group had some kind of music thing going on. It was, it was fun. We all had great stories. Uh, and uh, that is my first awareness of the, uh, the low cast as a, a print uh, or the loathe, the loathe movement, the loathe concept in the print media. And then later, uh, after I, I met you some years later and, uh, and then uh, we got reacquainted, um, I think it was episode five when we first hung out to record material, but uh, uh, musically, BNR, uh, Boyle Norman Roberts was involved from uh, episode two. Uh, with the music background, I believe. Yeah, I so. Yeah, so I've uh, been around for the uh, the web version almost from the get-go. I uh, really uh, was uh, just blown away here in the first episode and, and the manifest and, and all these things that uh, uh, were coming out of my uh, my computer were really interesting and uh, fun and reminded me of uh, just pirate radio, I suppose. It had a, it had some sort of a, some sort of comical bent to it, kind of dark sarcastic but uh, political too at least in early episodes I think if I recall uh, uh, the the, uh, the helicopters and the storming of the <laughs> in San Francisco there chaos yeah chaos, chaos. There. 
So we were uh, uh, at uh, Matt and Molly's uh, place, which uh, was up behind uh, my place, and uh, we we all uh, converged up there for a meal and many cocktails, and uh, suddenly Jason's recording us, and lo and behold, that's the uh, the first uh, uh, content that I was knowingly participating in, <laughs> specifically for Lowcast. Do you remember the first thing that ran? The first episode, or, or the first your, your my first uh, the first thing? Well, was it East Salem, East Salem Hills? Ah, uh, it was it was uh, yes, the East Salem Hills. Uh, it was the uh, pre graduation end of our uh, senior year party, uh, Bethel Hill, and uh, that was quite a quite a story. Again, uh, Matthew and myself in the Galaxy Five Hundred. I look at Matt, he looks at me, and we say, "Hit it." And we're in the car before you know what happens. Engines fired up. Cars around us all fired up. You hear nothing but engines are firing up left and right. And everyone drops into gear at the same time. You got no place to go except for down. You got a little gulch, kind of a burnout little drainage ditch. Maybe wide enough for a, a car. A smaller car would probably fall into the ditch and that would be a high center doom. Hello, people. This is Regan here. Uh met Mr. Jason Chastain uh, at a party down at uh, Mr. David Whip's house, and we jammed, and it was cool. And then at another party, uh, I ran into him, and he put a microphone in my face and said, Give me a story about... I forget what he said. Um... But he said, you know, this is the theme or whatever or something. And, yeah, and so I, oh, that's right. It was a memory. Uh, I think it was a, a Matt Snyder memory. Uh, yeah, we were at Matt's place. Uh, it was Mom's place down on the coast, Pacific City. And um, it was the morning after. It was absolutely the morning after. It was one of those morning afters. The only cool and very groovy thing about it was it was like late November, early December or something, and we were all outside on the deck in our shorts and no shirts, and the sun was shining, and we were warm on the Oregon coast, that close to winter. But other than that, it was just one of those fucking morning afters. So I told that story into the microphone. And that was the beginning. From there, I was a roving reporter. Hello, this is Regan Roberts, roving reporter for Lowe's Megacorp and Lowe's Cast. Hello, this is Regan Roberts, the rambling reporter for Lowe's Megacorp and Lowe's Cast. Hello, this is Regan Roberts, rocking reporter for Lowe's Megacorp and Lowe's Cast. Hello, this is Regan Roberts, your really cool reporter for Lowe's Megacorp and Lowe's Cast. Thinking of other adjectives and things that start with R. Hello, this is Regan Roberts, the really groovy reporter for Loathe Megacorp, Loathe Cast. Hello, Regan Roberts here, your retarded reporter for Loathe Megacorp and Loathe And reported Cast. from many bars around town. Uh, a trip to the coast I took twice from the uh, Portland International Auto Show. Yes, uh, much reporting was done. Um, Mr. Kirk Schreider and I uh, joined forces, we combined our talents, and recorded uh, some radio theater type stuff. Uh, we got together and worked on a, a piece, and uh, that was the fall, and then we started, we did the, the Lotham series, uh, which was awesome because <laughs> I didn't wasn't working and I could actually put like 35, 40 hours a week and you know of time in a week into production and uh, yeah we learned a lot uh, and had a lot of fun and yeah that is pretty much how when and why I got involved with Loathcast and it's been a plot Fucking eh. It's been a blast is what I was going to say. But obviously I had the word past in my mind. And that came out 
last. Oh well, I'll get past it. This is Regan, rocking and rolling and roving reporter for Load Mega Corp and Load Cast. Now that I'm working for community television as the programmer, it's funny to me that, you know, now I get to work with contributors who, you know, physically bring their content in and hand it to me um, and ask that it be played, whereas part a large part of Loathcap was, you know, big calling people and begging them to turn stuff in. We did. We went from cassettes to... Uh, phone lines to the, you know, we all, some of us got the ability to, you know, record it straight into our computer and then, you know, either by email or what other, whatever other file sharing methods we developed, we were able to sort of move the bits and bytes around to one another. Um, met Jason Ivey, who is my neighbor when Trina bought this house here in Boise, uh, became her neighbor, and I, my neighbor, and, and our neighbor. Um, construction guy, kind of a big redneck, but he didn't really fit in totally with that stereotype. He's got more on the ball than that. He had some stuff written, you know, you know, poetry, teen angst kind of stuff. And I swear to God, we got like 30 foot in here. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, we flew. And I was like, oh, God, you know, and the truck, I don't know if you've ever seen an actual car jump. It always lands nose first because the engine's heavy. Well, this goes double for trucks, apparently, because it went ass over tea kettle, dude. <laughs> we landed. We landed, I swear to God, at probably, <laughs> I have to say it. I'd have to say at least a 60 degree angle. Okay? Bam! Nosed it right into the freaking ground, bent frame. That he uh, wanted to play with. So once we introduced him to this whole idea, he was like gung ho. So he got in, I got in pretty early on in it. Maybe even er yeah, earlier than like uh, than some of the other Portland crew, Regan Roberts. Kirk Schreider, um, David Boyle, the, uh, but, at, but at any rate, so at some point after, oh yeah, the live show. I remember the live show, I kind of thought that it would blow, we did it the summer of 08, it really turned out to be great. Sweated like pigs in a basement, humid and baking our pavement. We went back stay hosted us so well. Wither was giving us pure health, but the fear kept our minds clear. And man was our bestest friend. And we jammed till we were so sore. Smoked and drank and jammed some more. I remember chaos. Scripts were flying, we were lost. Chastain, he pulled us together. We have the best live show ever. It wasn't until after that we saw what we'd accomplished and dropped jaws. Incredible feat, it was pulled off. It ended up more than good enough. And yeah, Kirk. Drank three kegs of beer and threw Dave in the pool on his ear. At 3:30 a.m., the whole crowd about chat. Well, they surely had enough of that shit. But I remember the live show to Winbex and Salem. We did go. Millions of strings pulled together. The live show will live on forever. I remember the live show. 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 Kind of. 
We'll be back for the second half of our show in just a moment. 